When Anycubic released the Cobra 3 combo, their Anycubic slicer just could not keep up. There's a lot of issues, especially with the remote printing as well as the painting feature that would allow you to change the color of certain parts of an object if you were doing multicolor printing. So in response to that, Anycubic released their own port of Orca, and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to download that, and they call it Anycubic Slicer Next. This version of their slicer allows for much better painting tools as well as remote printing and a bunch of other features that the other version of their slicer just couldn't do. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to download this port of Orca as well as the settings that I use on my printer personally, as well as the other features that this slicer comes with. So the first thing you're going to want to do is search up Anycubic in your browser. And you're going to click on the website, which should be the first result. Once the website loads up, you're going to want to click on software that's on the top. Then click on Anycubic Slicer next in the drop down menu. Once that loads in, you're then going to select your OS. The only two operating systems are Apple and Windows. Linux is not yet available, so choose your operating system and begin to download. Once it downloads, follow the prompt to complete the install and the slicer should open. Now, some of you in the comments wanted to see my settings, so I will show them to you real quick. So I'll just scroll through them real quick. Uh, most of these are just default settings that the slicer came with. I didn't really adjust many of them. All of the ones on the quality section are pretty much all default. Um, going over to the strength, I did mess with the top and bottom layers. I changed those to six and the wall loops to three. To me, those help just make the outer layers look better and the inside of the print stronger. Again, for the speed settings, I really didn't change anything. All of these are pretty much the default settings that the slicer comes with for the Cobra 3. And then on the support side, sometimes I will give the print some wraps just to help with the bed adhesion, but that's rare because it has pretty good bed adhesion otherwise. And on others, again, if I need a prime tower for a multi-material print, I'll do that. If not, I'll just leave it unticked. And that's pretty much all my settings. And now I'm going to show you the workbench tab. If you go over to the workbench tab, you can monitor your printer while it's printing, as well as check the status of your printer. You can also check other things such as your nozzle and bed temp, as well as the progression of the print. You can also see the selected colors that you have in your Ace Pro. You can also check the external rack or the secondary Ace Pro if you do have one. You can change the settings on your Ace Pro, like enabling the drying or ticking on auto refill. The auto refill feature uses multiple rolls of filament by hands free automatically moving onto the next roll once the current one that is in use is empty. Another cool feature that you're able to utilize on the workbench is the camera so you're actually able to monitor a live stream of your print. The Cobra 3 camera also comes with other features such as time lapse and AI detection for failures. You're also able to customize your colors more in depth. So you can see the one selected on here on my printer is orange, but you can adjust it so it perfectly matches your filament color. This is a cool little feature that the workbench has that is not actually available on the printer itself, so that's neat. A big advantage that this slicer has over the old one is that it has a smart fill angle adjuster, which will allow you to adjust how far the fill line goes. So just to show you guys a quick example of what I'm talking about, if I slide over the smart fill angle to a wider angle, I can fill in the back part of the hat black with one click, and vice versa if I was trying to fill in just certain parts of the hat black, I can adjust that smart fill angle to a smaller angle so that way only certain parts of the hat fill in that color. So that's a really cool feature and it makes it a lot easier for you to pick what parts of the model you want to turn to a certain color. This feature makes it so much easier to paint your 3D object. The paint feature also has different types of brushes, so compared to the old slicer where I only had one brush and then the fill option, this one is fully customizable so that way you can paint exactly where you're trying to paint on every part of the model. So those are just some of the biggest features to point out about this slicer. Like I said, the remote printing feature as well as the paint upgrade is the biggest parts that I like about this slicer and is much more familiar to other slicers like Orca and Prusa. So I hope this video helps you guys today. I know that the first version of their slicer was a huge pain, especially number one, the remote printing just did not work and trying to use the paint tool was a complete pain, especially when you couldn't adjust the settings on how far you wanted to be able to paint stuff and fill in certain areas. So this version completely fixed all that. So if you're on the fence for buying a Cobra 3 and one of your main reasons was that the slicer had a really bad rep, this version completely fixes all those problems. And if you'd like to see an unboxing of the Cobra 3 combo, 
click this video right here and subscribe to the channel for more 3D printing content. And I'll see you guys in the next video.